What's going on, boys and girls? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. We got the good ambiance going on in the background, man, from the jungle forest, my favorite part of Sumeru. We got the best damn theory crafting coming to you, all right? I'm excited for you guys to see what I've prepared for you today with Nahida. Uh, you're gonna learn how strong she is. You're gonna learn her best weapons and how they differentiate from one another in terms of value. You're gonna learn everything you need to know about her kit that's actually important, the intricacies and meticulous details of her kit that people are probably interested in knowing. Um, what I won't be doing is explaining the very surface level things such as what does her skill do? What does her burst do? Okay, you should already know this especially considering that she's an hour within hours of being released I know you guys have absorbed all kinds of content on the internet We're not gonna do the things that don't need to be discussed. Okay, boys Let's go ahead and go over the build that I will be presenting to you on paper uh, Because I want you guys to be able to fact check it if you're capable of doing so uh, I don't like just showing people spreadsheets because of this. I want you to be able to see the work laid out uh, so if there's an error in there, you can point it out. Anyways, this is the uh, circlet, this is the cup, this is the hourglass, uh, this is the feather, and that's the flower. Pause the screen if need be so that you can see the substats and keep up with me in the future when I'm going over these things mathematically. Um, I do want you guys to know there's going to be a couple of nuances in uh, the slideshows presented, and those are going to be whether I'm doing an elemental mastery uh, cup versus a dendro cup. How am I going to change that up? Only thing I'm going to do is just swap the main stat. It's going to be a dendro cup instead of an elemental mastery cup. And then I'm going to have to go back in and recalculate the differences of Nahida's kit because she has a couple of things that scale off of elemental mastery. And then the other difference is going to be the crit damage circlet versus a crit rate circlet because her uh, free to play weapon and her signature weapon, they're going to be forced to run a crit rate uh, circlet. Otherwise, they're going to have bad crit value. So how am I going to change that if this is the piece I'm rocking right now with my current build? All I'm going to do is make the uh the crit value the exact same in the sub stats so if i rock if i switch a crit rate circlet out all i'm going to do is take the uh crit damage value and make it the same value as this crit rate plus 6.6 .6 right here which is essentially 6.6 .6 times two okay so i wanted you guys to understand that just so you can know okay so that's how he's changing these things up if you're not a math person you probably don't even know what the hell i'm talking about but if you are you know exactly what i'm talking about Finally, let's go ahead and look at the actual crit value. We got 76.2 over 181.4 with 511 EM. However, Nahida has a built-in 115 EM. So she's actually gonna be at 616 EM naturally. The other factors that you guys have to uh, take into consideration as well is that this is the team build I'm going to be using. Uh, as an example, there are a plethora of ways to run Nahida. I've already went over the teams that I'll be trying out with her, uh, at, at least a few of them. There are going to be more too. But um, this is the team that I'm going to be presenting to you on paper. The buffs that you have to factor in are going to be Zhongli's shield debuff. Plus, I'm going to be putting a deep wood memory set on him. So in total, he's going to have a 50% debuff to the Dendro element. Uh, once they go into the negative, that's really just going to be a, roughly a 20% true damage bonus to uh to Nahida's damage. Yelan's gonna have the Elegy of the End bow on, so she's gonna give 100 EM to the party, but we're just gonna focus on what she's giving to Nahida, plus another 20% attack. Those are the only things you gotta uh, focus on. And then of course, these three are completely different elements than Nahida. So the Gilded Dreams damage, or Elemental Mastery bonus is gonna be 150 additional Elemental Mastery given to Nahida upon triggering a, um, a Elemental Reaction. All right, so now that we have all of that out of the way, we can go ahead and get into uh, the meticulous details, boys. Uh, how to build Nahida. There's a couple of uh, bullet points I put down there to help you out and give you a, a, good, a good idea on how you should go about building her depending on the circumstances. Deep with Memories is a great set, but you should only run it when there's no other Dendro debuffers on the team. If there's other Dendro debuffers on the team, you're wasting a lot of value. You might as well give her more EM. Uh, the other good factor is if you're running the Nilo composition, this is also going to be a good set because it's going to allow Nilo's blooms to deal more damage. Uh, and then it's also going to allow Nahida herself to deal more damage. So this is a great set to run in that scenario as well. And then, of course, Hyper Bloom and Burgeon comps. The debuff, the Dendro debuff applies to the damage done by Hyper Bloom and Burgeon. Or you have up to a 900 to 1000 EM achieved within the build already, which is very hard to do if you don't have a Gilded Dream set. This is implying that you probably have like a triple EM Sucrose or a C2 Cosma on top of the Elegy of the End bow with like two EM Hourglass and uh, Cup Nahida. 
Well, that's that's hard. That's very hard to do. But for the most part, uh, her best in slot is going to be Gilded Dreams because it gives just so much freaking elemental mastery to her. And her kit just has so many things that synergize with elemental mastery. It's insane, which we'll get to in a bit. But uh, yeah, when to run this set, if you're running spread aggravate comps, of course, they're going to deal much more damage with spread and aggravate. Or you have that additional unit on the team that's debuffing Dendro, such as Jong Lee or a, a Dendro Traveler or Dendro or Calais that's rocking the deep wood memory set. And then you have less than like 600 EM within your build. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to run Gilded Dreams uh, for the most part, unless it's on, uh, you know, in these scenarios. Uh, how to build Nahida for her weapons. Now I know this looks like expensive but it's actually not i'm just honestly if you go and look through the catalog of catalysts that are available there's actually not a lot of many op uh, very many options that really synergize well with nahida from what i've seen um the her signature weapon is in, is incredibly strong i'll let you know that right now lost prayer is a very good weapon if you own it it has been out since i believe since the very first clee banner so chances are there's a lot of people that own a lost prayer to the sacred wind it's what i'm going to be using myself personally and uh, it's a very good weapon kakura's verity is actually a little bit better than lost prayer but the problem is i'm pretty sure most people don't have a kakura's verity probably like less than one percent people in the community have a kakura's verity uh, so the reason I said you should trip because her free to play, uh, I mean, my bad, the free to play weapon map of Mary is one of her best weapons that she can actually utilize. Um, it does have a little bit of issues with its kit and how it synergizes with her, which we'll go over in due time, but it's a very good weapon to utilize and you don't need any of these. You can totally rock a map of Mary. And if you have it at R5, hell good for you. I, ha I personally have an R3 map of Mare, so I could utilize that if I wanted to as well. But this is a very good weapon, and most importantly, it's completely free. Now, the Wandering Evening Even Star is going to be better than this, but the problem is you kind of need higher refinements for it. I'm still not sure how its passive works too, because I don't own it. It make it implies that its passive like just never ends. Like after every 10 seconds, you just keep getting another attack damage bonus. That's what it implies. But I'm not actually sure about that. So that's a little bit in the air for me. If you know the answer, go ahead and answer it for me. But even if it doesn't do that, it's still a very strong weapon. The problem is it's one of the newer weapons. And I know most of us are of the mindset of why should I get any newer weapons when the weapons I have work fine enough? This game isn't that hard, right? So that's why I put it down right here just as an option. If you have it, cool. If you have it at R5, that's like you spent some money on that, bro. But this is a monstrous weapon if you have it at R5. It's actually wild. Uh, so yeah, it's much better than Map of Mare if you have, uh, you know, the uh, refinements of it. Now, let's go ahead and go into Nahida's passives. Uh, the first passive, and we're not talking about the one where you screenshot and get like, uh, you know, convenience or whatever. We're talking about her actual passives that apply to the mechanical gameplay. So her A1 gives 25% elemental mastery of the person in your party with the highest elemental mastery to the active character so uh, inside of Nahida's burst. So you pop Nahida's burst, whoever's inside of her domain expansion, they're gonna get 25% EM of, of the highest person in the party with uh, elemental mastery, which is probably gonna be Nahida. You'll probably have the highest elemental mastery with Nahida. And if you have 1000 elemental mastery, you can give 250 elemental mastery to that active character in the field. So in my case, it would be Sino. Um, so that's huge. By the way, it's a maximum of 250 elemental mastery. So if you go past 1000 EM with Nahida, they're not going to get more than that. They're just going to get 250. That's the cap. So that's her first passive. And what's beautiful about this passive is she can apply it to herself, which is very important if you're trying to do a main DPS Nahida. If you're trying to do main DPS Nahida, then this is a hell of a passive because she already can get a bunch of EM on her own. And then she sits inside of her own burst and gets even more EM. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so uh, very good information to know in that regard. Now, A2. Her A2 gives a 0.1% damage bonus for every EM point you have above 200 elemental mastery. For an example, if you have 1000 elemental mastery, subtract 200 from it and then do 800 EM times 0.1, which is essentially an 80% damage bonus. Uh, and then she also gets a crit rate scaling. This is probably one of the most broken things about her kit uh, because she essentially scales with crit rate and EM within her base stats. So she gets a 24% crit rate scaling and 115 EM scaling all within her base stats, which is cracked out. Uh, but yeah, in other words, 1000 EM is going to give Nahida her max bonuses, 24% crit rate and 80% damage. And uh, keep in mind that 24% crit rate is only applied to her Tri-Karma, aka her skill ticks. 
Okay, that's only applied to that. It's not applied to her normal attacks. And her burst doesn't deal any damage. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and go over artifact stat priority. Main stat priority, without a shadow of a doubt, elemental mastery for the hourglass. Okay, you have to go for uh, elemental mastery on the hourglass. It is just too freaking good, which you'll see in the future slides. Uh, now for the cup, you're going to see in the future slides as well. Elemental mastery is better than Dendro, which is very rare. It's normally not the case. It's better than the damage bonus. And it, again, it's because she scales off of three different things in her kit with elemental mastery. Uh, and again, you'll see that mathematical difference in the future slide shows as well. But elemental mastery is the way to go because for one, elemental mastery scales off of her skill. For two, elemental mastery scales off of spread and aggravate. And for three, she has a, uh, her A1 also gives a em transfer to your active character so that's three different elemental mastery values the only defining thing that's going to separate you running or it's going to make you decide or dendro over em is the damage difference which you're going to come to find it's almost identical or practically is identical uh so yeah and then main stat priority on the circlet of course it's going to be crit rate or crit damage depending on the weapon you're using map of mare and the signature weapon crit rate with 100 uh but uh the lost prayer to sacred wind very high crit rate value already you're going to run a crit damage circlet which is going to be advantageous to the lost prayer to the sacred wind now, in regards to her substat priority, crit value is going to be number one, but honestly, it's competing with elemental mastery, which is because elemental mastery is just as important. And then one thing that Nahida's kit is uh, lacking, the, the weakness that she's lacking, she doesn't have a lot of attack built into her, her main kit. So you definitely want to try and get some attack percent rolls if you can. And then last but not least, get some energy recharge here and there. She only has a 50 cost burst, so you don't need a lot of energy recharge. But if you can get it, you can get like maybe 10 to 20 percent ER within the build. You're, you're solid now the last thing i want to mention to you guys though is although i said do em here em em here and there if you have one of them teams where you got like a c2 Kazuo with like a r5 L i'm talking to the wells elegy of the end bow there is such a thing as having way too much elemental mastery in other words if you already got about 900 to a thousand elemental mastery then you can totally swap this puppy out for like an attack percent uh, hourglass to boost her attack threshold up because you're going to get severe diminishing returns because there's caps on the on the on the benefits you reap from reaching past a thousand em so keep that in mind as well boys moving on to the base stats um these are going to be her weapons okay this is nahita completely by herself 299 attack 115 em five percent crit rate over 50 percent crit damage with the lost prayer she's going to be at 907 base attack 115 em 38% over 50. Go ahead and look at the other weapons. I don't have to go over them all, boys. But basically, those are the, the stats of the weapons, depending on which one you're utilizing. Moving on to Lost Prayer. That's the first weapon we're going to start off with, boys. I know there's a lot of numbers on the screen. Don't worry. I'll be walking you through everything, okay? So these are the build stats with Lost Prayer when you're utilizing the Gilded Dream set, okay? Attack percent sources. That means all the uh, sources that I have within the entire build, including the team composition, that I'm going to be getting attack percent buffs from. I have 10.5% on one of the pieces in my sub stats. I have another 5.3% on another piece in my sub stats. And then I get an additional 20% from Elegy of the End. And that's it. So you can see what I mean by she's severely lacking some attack percent within the build. And that's why I was saying if you have a, a crap ton of elemental mastery, and, what, and by crap ton, I mean over 1,000, you definitely want to switch over to an attack, perceive, uh, attack percent timepiece cup. Or oh, my bad, my bad, uh, hourglass. Uh, total flat attack is going to be 311 from a level 20 feather, 43 in my sub, and another 16 in my sub on a different piece. In total, I'm going to have 1602 attack with the lost prayer. That's uh, the mathematical uh, formula for this is going to be right here. 907, which is my base attack with the lost prayer, plus 370. That's going to be the total flat attack right here. And then we're going to multiply these attack percent percentages, which is right here, 35.8. And that's going to give me 1602. Now, EM sources, 115, it already comes built in with her, plus 80, plus another 150, that's the Gilded Dreams reaction, plus the two-piece Gilded Dreams, 187 from the Hourglass, plus 100 from Elegy, and then plus 58 from Substats. I got a 58 on my Substat piece. Now, what I want you guys to keep in mind is this entire build is not the EM Cup build. This is... uh. This is with the understanding that you're rocking a dendro cup over an em cup and i am going to go over the em cup scenario as well so with a dendro cup i'm only at six, 690 elemental mastery 
Okay, finally, my damage sources. I have 46.6% from the Dendro Cup, and then I have 49% from her A2 passive. Remember when I said her A2 passive has a 0.10% scaling based off your elemental mastery above 200 EM? That's where I got this from, okay? Now, finally, total damage bonus is gonna be these two, 95.6%. Crit value is gonna be 90.8 over 181.4. The 90.8 is actually factoring in the crit value I got from every point above the 200 EM. That's a 0.03% scaling. So it's actually 690 minus 200, which is gonna be 490 times 0.03. And that's the additional crit that's been added into here that only applies to her skill Tri Karma. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm not gonna go over all of this for every for all for all three weapons it just takes too much time that's exactly why i showed you guys the build in the beginning so that you can fact check me if need be but now we're going to go ahead and go into the skill damage the tri karma damage so lost prayer gilded dreams with 690 em at a crowned talent level ta a crown skill these are going to be the uh the scalings if you have her at level 10 skill it's going to scale off 185.76% of her attack and then 371.52% of her EM. These are just ridiculous scalings, man. So this is going to be the attack scaling right here, right? And then this, this number you see is going to be that bad boy right there. That's going to be 690, which is her EM times 3.7152. Finally, this is her damage bonus. This is her actual crit damage. This is the defense of the monster. And uh, that's assuming she's level 90 and the monster's level 90. And then finally, this is the debuff of Zhong Li shield plus deep wood memory set put on him. He's gonna give a 20% true damage bonus. That's gonna come out to 18,292 crit strike. And the uh, average is gonna be 17,135. The average math is down here. It's your non-crit rate times one plus crit rate times crit damage. And that's gonna be that little number. So that is not considering a, act, no, my bad, spread. That's not con considering if you triggered a spread reaction, which you'll probably be triggering those a lot with Nahida considering she uh, she puts a lot of Dendra on the unit. So um, if you're running a quicken composition, she's gonna be triggering the hell out of spread, right? I just showed this just in case you're running like a Nilo comp. This is what you can expect her to do with this particular build. Now, spread proc, now we're gonna throw in this bad boy. Spread is gonna be 500, the, the mathematical formula for spread is gonna be 500 times your EM divided by your EM plus 1200. Uh, you guys don't have to know that. That's just for the math people. Uh, so that's how I got this number right here. And then her flat damage, her flat or any flat spread damage at level 90 is 1808. So once you put in that mathematical uh, number, you're going to multiply it times 1808. And that's how I got 5,108. Okay. So once you put in that whole entire formula, we're going to get a 35,162 pop on their head when you trigger spread with her tri karma. Um, that's going to be on average 32,938. So this is the lost prayer. You can see it's a very strong all field. I mean, we're, we're doing more damage than an albedo, right? Like uh, with the spread procs. Now, my question is, is she procking spread every time she procs her tri karma? Um, I'm pretty sure she is, but I would like to see when she releases if that's actually the case. We will find out. And of course, I'll confirm that with you guys, but I'm pretty sure she actually is. She's triggering it every single time. So that means she's essentially going to be crit striking 35,000 with this build every single time, which is nuts. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what is the damage difference when you switch over to an EM cup instead of the Dendro cup? So this is going to be an EM cup, 877 EM instead of the 690 that we had. Now, look at the differences between the scalings, right? You see her EM, this is her EM right here. It's now 3,258 because of that 877 EM scaling. When we come back to the previous one, it was only at 2,563. Uh, furthermore, this number has also grown as well. It's at 5,623, which is her spread uh, damage bonus, flat damage bonus. Without it, look at where it was before. So you can see these have definitely improved because of the increased EM scaling. However, the damage is pretty much identical to what it was before. So when we go back and look at the Dendro damage bonus, the average is 32938, 17135, and the average here, pretty much the same so although we lost and took a hit on our damage bonus the flat damage bonuses we got from the em ended up measuring out to identical damage now that is advantageous of an em cup because if an em cup can do the same damage as a dendro cup 
and give more EM to your active character, clearly the EM cup is going to be better than a Dendro cup in a supportive uh, environment. Now, Nahida as a main DPS, I think it's gonna do better with a Dendro cup because she can give herself the, the, uh, the lacking of the elemental mastery with her A2 passive. So if you're running main DPS Nahida, I would actually argue that the Dendro cup is gonna be a better value than the elemental mastery cup, okay? Keep that in mind, boys. Oh yeah, and the last thing I wanna to mention to you guys is um, the reason we're only talking about her skill is because her skill is just like Albedo. If you've been going into my streams, I've been saying this a lot. Nihito is pretty much a Albedo, but better, and Dendro. And Dendro itself, it makes her more better, right? She's doing the same damage as Albedo. Actually, she's doing more damage. She's doing more damage than an Albedo. She's giving more elemental mastery to your active character than Albedo. And if your argument is Albedo gives the elemental mastery to the whole team, well, yeah, he does, but him and Zhong Lee can't do jack shit with elemental mastery. And then the other character is generally supporting your main DPS on that team. So really, he's only giving it to the active character as well. And she's giving more than that. And then finally, she's freaking Dendro, Albedo's Geo. Dendro can allow you to enable you to do spread, aggravate, virgin, hyper bloom. Like she's just, <laughs> they just, they just straight up said, let's make a Dendro cracked Albedo. That's what they did with her. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say here and the reason I'm making that comparison is because I think Albedo is one of the most slept on five-star units in the entire game. So the fact that they're dropping somebody that's actually much better than him speaks volumes to their value. I mean, that's just, that's ridiculous. And the crazy thing is, this is all within her C0 kit. You don't need a single constellation for her to be this cracked, which is also a massive positive and a good incentive for people to grab her if they have the uh, wishes available. Anyways, boys, let's move on to the Mappa Mare. We're gonna move on to the Mappa Mare stats. This is gonna be the map of Mera. Remember I told you I'm not going over this again. Pause the screen if you must. The only thing that's changed is that you got 24% R3 map of Mare uh, passive implemented into the damage bonus, which pushes it further. It also has a little bit higher elemental mastery. Of course, it has 110 higher elemental mastery than the Lost Prayer, but it has a little bit less attack. But yeah, what I want to talk about with the map of Mera is it's 24%. Yes, you get a 24% uh, damage bonus, which is very advantageous. However, it's it has issues. You cannot trigger the Map of Mare's passive unless the character is on the field. So main DPS uh, Nahida will be very good with the Map of Mare. Support DPS Nahida is gonna be a little weird with the Map of Mare because depending on the team you're using, getting those two stacks with her on the field can be tricky. So I'm not sure, although it may look good on paper, it might not be as good in practice is what I'm trying to say for support Nahida. Uh, at, and, and then it only lasts 10 seconds. She is gonna be on a team like Sino where he's probably gonna be on the field for 18 seconds. You're gonna lose your value after that 10 second mark. And that, and then I don't even know if you're gonna get the two stacks up without like kind of messing up the, the, the fluidity of your rotation. So that's what I want you to keep in mind with the map of Mare. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at it. Uh, with a Dendro Cup, okay? With a Dendro Cup, it's doing 18,691 uh, without a proc of spread, and then with spread, 36,000. On average, we're looking at 17 and 33. This is a R3 map of Mare. Now, what is the damage difference? Let's go back and look at the uh, Lost Prayer and compare them real quick. So here's gonna be the Lost Prayer, 17,135 and 32,938 on average versus 33.1 and 17. Again, pretty identical, but this one's gonna be way more uh, inconsistent than the Lost Prayer is. And this is, Lost Prayer doesn't get any of its passive uh, bonus on a support of Nahida because it, you have to be on the field for four seconds at a time. And then when you get off the field, it's completely gone. So <laughs> it doesn't get any of its damage bonus passive. And that's always been the problem with Lost Prayer. But the fact remains that Lost Prayer is way more easier to, uh, to play with Nahida than the map of Mare on a supportive role. So now let's look at the map of Mare though with the EM cup. With an EM cup, it's actually dealing more of an average without triggering spread, but it's dealing a little bit more of uh, less of an average when you do trigger spread, I believe. 33.2 versus 33.1. Again, very identical and also drives the point home that elemental mastery cup is better than dendro cup on a supportive nahida but the other thing i want to mention to you guys is dude the, uh, the fact that a free-to-play weapon is competing with a five-star weapon that also speaks a lot of volumes boys so let's go ahead and take a look at the signature weapons build 
um, you're going to see that the damage difference off rip is pretty huge. It's 152% damage bonus. And that's because it has a whopping 265 built-in elemental mastery, as well as a 30% damage bonus, depending on how many people on your team are not uh, of the same element as Nahida. So I got three people on the team, so we get a 30% damage bonus. And then she also gives a elemental mastery with her signature weapon, like 50 or 54? Okay, never mind, I stand corrected, it's 40. She gives 40 elemental mastery to everyone else on the team with this weapon as well but still those are massive perks guys i'm not gonna lie to you 40 elemental mastery given to everybody on the field uh plus this all these ridiculous damage bonuses i mean good lord now what i will say is with her the dendro cup is better than the em cup and the reason being is because she runs into em overkill to where she runs into that cap that she has on her a2 and a1 so because she runs into uh, elemental mastery overkill is actually unwise to put an em cup on her and i will show that to you with the mathematical numbers as well looking at her with the dendro cup she's popping up for 42,600 damage on a uh, spread pop and then without spread she's popping people for 22,250 so this is why i told y'all to wait to see if you want to pull for her signature weapon because i want you to see the numbers and see for yourself i'm not going to talk bad about it or talk good about it i'm just going to show you the numbers now you can make the choice on your own oh, okay that's how strong it is or that's how weak it is that's for you to decide but you can see these this is how hard she's hitting with her weapon uh with a dendro cup now, when we switch over to Elemental Mastery Cup, she's at 955 already. When we switch over to Elemental Mastery Cup, she's at 1142 Elemental Mastery. 1,142 Elemental Mastery, boys. But look at that damage. The damage dropped off quite a bit, boys. Average is 36. Average is 19. Look at the average here. 21 and 40. So, you're definitely doing much more damage. But, is it worth playing this? Now, it's not that big of a damage difference, but the problem is you already passed your 1,000 EM threshold. So you're not going to get any more than 250 EM that you would get at 1,000 given to your active character. You're not going to get any more than the 80% damage bonus, 24% crit rate given to your Tri-Karma at 1,000. So there's really no point in going here. Plus, you get uh, diminishing returns on your spread procs. There's really no point in going here, boy. So what I would uh, uh, suggest you do is just stick to the Dendro Cup you're still going to get the same damn damage bonus. You're only 45 away from hitting 1,000 EM, boys. So, there you have it. That's how strong she is with her best weapons available right now. I didn't do Kagura's Verity, because like I said, nobody, nobody really has that shit now. <laughs> but that's how strong she is with her best weapons. Her skill is literally her, her bread and butter. If you are somebody that's interested in how strong she is as a main DPS, you know if you've been keeping up with the channel i'm going to be dropping showcases about her left and right within the coming days i do have a surgery this friday for the bottom row of my teeth unfortunately so i'll probably be out of commission here and there uh but we will be doing showcases showing how good she is as a main dps character as well but for the most part guys i think i brought a lot of value with uh, to you with this on paper guide um let me know your thoughts down below let me know what you guys think i'll catch you on the flip side all right y'all take care